Hi, welcome to Morning Afterglow. It's good to have this little visit with you today. And today we're looking and thinking about looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26, which uh, was the passage from which I tried to preach yesterday, which was the Lord's Supper Day at First Baptist Church of Fenton. And I always look forward to the Lord's Supper uh, worship experiences with all of God's people. Uh, we obviously uh, celebrate in the Lord's Supper uh, His broken body, uh, Jesus' suffering and broken body, which was lovingly uh, offered by Him uh, for us because He was saving us in and through His death. We celebrate uh, the shed blood in the cup and uh, think about Jesus' shed blood for our sins and to make us right before God and forgiven of our sins. But the verse that uh, was very gripping to me yesterday from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26, was verse 26 itself, the last verse, uh, which says uh, uh, that we should, uh, we should do this. We should proclaim uh, the Lord's Supper. We should proclaim the death of the Lord in the Lord's Supper um, until He comes back. And I was very, very struck by the fact that when we are taking the Lord's Supper together, and of course it's a visualization, we're eating the bread and we're drinking of the cup, um, we're actually preaching. We're preaching Jesus' death. Uh, we're preaching His death for the salvation of sinners. We're preaching His death uh, for the cleansing of sin. We're preaching His death as a means by which and through which <clears throat> sinners come to know God in a saving fashion through Jesus Christ our Lord. And of course, verse 26 says we're to continue to do that, keeping the Lord's Supper and thus preaching uh, the Lord's death by taking the Lord's Supper. We're to do that until He comes back. <clears throat> so here in this one verse, or actually in this whole paragraph, uh, you have a looking back uh, to the death of Christ and remembering that His death is the means by which we're saved. And then we're to look forward, which is, uh, we're looking forward to His coming back, which means what? Which means He didn't stay dead. Uh, he's alive. And not only is He risen from the dead, which is inferred in verse 26, but He is the Lord of life. He is the victor, the conquering Christ. And all of our hope and all of our trust and all of our joy, uh, all of that is built in, in Him. So I'm struck by the fact that when we take the Lord's Supper, we're doing what Christians have, have done for 2,000 years in celebrating the death of Christ for the salvation of sinners. I, I have to tell you, I really enjoy the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> and I know many of you do too. I hope and pray that this week, as you go back to work and go back to school or go back and do whatever you do this week, that the remembrance of the Lord's Supper <clears throat> and all that it means will stay with you and it will calm you and it will comfort you and it will help you and it will strengthen you uh, this entire week. As you do whatever you do, may God uphold you and help you to remember Jesus Christ died for you. He was broken in His suffering and death for you. He shed His blood for you and He saved you in doing all of that. And as you remember Jesus having done that for you, I think it will change how we think about life and when we're tempted, well, how we will, how we will respond and, and all the struggles and trials that we may face, how we'll respond to those. And that will make us become in our lives a sermon to others as well. Well, it's uh, been good to share with you this morning. I like our little visits every week, and I hope and pray that God will bless you and keep you in His care, love, and grace uh, until we meet again. Until then, may God bless you, and we'll see you next time on Morning Afterglow.